Welcome to Inspire Journey. Well, I'm so glad to be here, Madonna. <laughs> it is a pleasure and looking forward to our conversation. And, and I know we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. And I guess you'll uh, be able to cover the whole J and then we'll I hope transition. So. If, if only time will permit <laughs> us, you know, because we have a lot to talk about. Um, with, from you, with the way you're talking, I, I believe you're not from here. I mean, my accent is different from yours. Just Whatever a little, just a little from. different. <laughs> I'm coming all the way from Washington, D.C. in the oh, United nice. States. Okay. And I'm uh, looking forward to, well, yeah, I've been here in Accra, I've been to uh, just at so many different places and, and enjoying myself on a level that I did not anticipate. It's, uh, I think every person of African descent in America needs to at least come here one time in their life. Okay, so when you stepped down from the aircraft and you got to Ghana, what was your biggest shock of your life when you got to Ghana? Like, you've been hearing about Africa, I know that, you know, news about Africa is about children with flies all over their faces and all there that. Were, there, none <laughs> of that was happening. Okay. I think how modern it mm. was, because in America what happens is, you, on television, Yeah. and uh, for a lot of American African Americans, I should say, what ends up happening is that there's a lot of time spent in front of the television. Mm. So from Roots, you know, that's a movie that, yeah, they, okay. Roots. <laughs> okay, from Roots to Coming to America, yeah. to Black Panther, to they have shaped a narrative. But many of our television shows, they kind of have a different slant. And so if you've never been here, then you don't, re you really don't know. You don't want you, to even come. You, you, that, that's <laughs> truth, because when I was telling people, oh, I'm going to Africa, why are you going to Africa? But when I got here, I understood why they don't want us to come. Mm. Because it's so rich. And once you start connecting with it, because it's like we we're being sent to all of the, I should say, European colonies. Yeah. And, or go to, uh, um, Cayman Islands, mm. or go to Bermuda. I've been to Bermuda twice, I've never been, this is my first time in Africa, and wow. there's something wrong with that. Mm. Uh, when I got here, I had a chance, I've seen the, the full experience. So I've seen the areas where it's low income, and, yeah. and so I've, I've gotten that experience, been out to the villages, but then I was also at the resorts. And when I went to the resort, I was like, wait a minute, this is just like the Bahamas. This mm. is just like Cayman Islands, it's just like Bermuda, but it's never branded like that. We don't see commercials in America saying go to Accra or Cape Coast, you don't see that. But who's supposed to do that? We are supposed to do that. That's right, so that's probably what well, I'm going to. you here, you can help us do Oh, that. I will. I, I mean, that, that takes us back to your media work. I know that you've, you've done a lot. I mean, if you're gonna tell the, the story of Africa, give us a better narration, it's, it's well told in pictures. That's right. You know, and you are here and you've seen everything for yourself. So what, what do we expect or what should we expect from you in terms of, let me say, cinematography or anything that's got to do A with A full it? context. Mm. Because that's what is missing. And when, when, just going to the village. See, when I went to the village, uh, they were making the kente cloth. They had the cocoa trees. Yeah. And when I was sitting there, I was looking around and I could see the, the wealth. Mm. I was like, this is wealth right here. It's like, you know, of course, with Black Panther, you have this fictitious Wakanda. Yes. But I was sitting in the real one. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. I, and he started to, uh, explaining all the different things you could do with a cocoa pod. Yeah, a lot of different things. At, at, but I didn't know that. You understand? Mm. I'm, I'm waiting for... Again, and unfortunately, most of us don't even know that. And most of us coming from Ghana or from Africa, we don't know that. And that I, is the saddest that's thing. The thing one that. of the things I realized is that I saw the similarities mm. and how there's been misinformation on both sides. Yeah. Because when I see the people working hard in the streets, when I see them coming up to the cars and the, the vendors, I say they understand entrepreneurship. Yeah, they do. But the, th the question is do they know what to do with it? And that's what I said. I saw that and I said, if they know what to do with it, then they could buy the buildings, they could do what so many other people are coming here and doing yeah. that aren't even from here. And if they work together, but see, we have the same challenge in America mm. where we're working hard, making everybody else a lot of money, but we don't own much. And this is where I think this is how, when the narrative comes in, when people can see, wait a minute, there's opportunity here on both sides. And that's why I want to, as the title of the show, inspire, mm. inspire this community and this culture to realize exactly what they have. Yeah. Because they have it. There's no, I wish I could have 
what I saw. Mm. What I have in America is nice, but the access to the land, the access to just the opportunities, now it's just a matter of getting the information to the people so they now know what to do with their labor instead of you know making the labor for everybody else, now they can take it and build the communities. And that's what I believe we're gonna see over the next 20 years. So, I mean, from what you said, uh, obviously a lot of people were surprised that you wanted to come down to Africa. What made you come here? I mean, what was the turning point for you? Interesting, that's a very good question. I did Ancestry.com, the DNA. Oh, okay, I've heard of that. Yes, I <laughs> okay. did Ancestry.com and then I did African Ancestry.com. They're mm. two different ones. Okay. So I did Ancestry.com first, and it told me it said, okay, this is what percentage African you are. This is what percentage European you are. Mm. Uh, and I knew that that was probably going to be the case, uh, just based on the family history. Okay. So it um, it gave the percentages of where I came from in Africa. So it said Ghana was a certain percent, Togo, Benin, Nigeria. Yeah. Um, uh, Congo, Cameroon, so it just kind of covered the west coast of Africa and went yeah. down to a little bit of South Africa. I said, you know what, where would be the first place I go? Now this is going to make you laugh. This is going to make you laugh. <laughs> I said, okay, because of my ignorance, I said, let me go to Google Earth. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed <laughs> to say this. I went to Google Earth mm -hmm. and I said, okay, let me see if I can go find a village with the shack, where what this is going to look like. And, okay. and so I'm going looking for a village, a tribe. That's what I'm looking for because of how I've been conditioned. Mm. I came over Accra mm. and I saw swimming pools. <laughs> and I said to myself, wait a minute. So then I went down to the street view and I said, hold on. I said, Th this is what it really looks like here. Mm. This is Africa. I said, this is the first place I'm going. I think the amazing thing about Africa is we give you um, a mixture of all yes. that you've heard of. And, you know, there's a little, a little bit of truth in what you've heard. You yes, you, you there is. You definitely see the, there, there the hats, you know, the thatched houses and, yes. and the lions and all that. Yes. But we also have, you know, tarred streets and we have nice hotels and modern, you know, buildings here as well. So. But what I found to be the most impressive was when I went to the market. Mm. And I went on a Saturday. Wh which of the markets did you go the to? The largest one. I was told that in it's Africa? the largest. I, I was told it's the largest one in West Africa. Okay. The, it is massive. It was like unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's crazy that. I mean, <laughs> chickens and. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I felt at home. Nice. I didn't feel like, oh, oh my goodness, look at that. I was like, wow, look at this. Look at how ingenious these people are. Very. It, it was a different, like in America, if you had that, the regulations, they're coming to shut it down. I know. But here, yeah, like. this is, I mean, I'm watching them prepare the food, I'm, I'm, the, the pumice, the rubber. I mean, you could have found anything out there. Anything. And, and everybody was just moving along, doing what they needed to do. Um, it was an experience that I think every person of African descent in America and South America, and yeah, <laughs> they need to come for... see it. I mean, I know, now I know a lot of people, you know, in Jamaica, I know they have something similar. Yes. And in some parts of South America and Central America, but it's... It's different here. It's different. I mean, the Jamaicans still want to come back here and, and experience it's it. Different. It's different. I, it's different. hard for me to still put it into words, but my goal and what I hope is that as economic education, financial literacy, once we start to understand that on both sides of the Atlantic, then we will be able to prevent people from taking so much from us because it's not much different than yeah. 400 years ago. It's just yeah. more sophisticated now. Oh, okay, I see that, okay, let's see. They don't know, but I know, so let me come in and take it. And this is not an, so much an ethnic thing, it's more of an education thing where people see it and they, they take advantage of what someone doesn't know because anybody mm. can look and see, okay, some, I can come in and see the gold in the village. Yeah. Now, the, the good thing is this village knows the gold that they have. Oh, no, they do. They know that gold. They know, they yeah. know it. And, and so, but if you find a village that doesn't know it, then somebody comes in and then 
takes advantage of them. But Smart. even but it's even deeper when you start looking at let's let's take it outside of the village. Let's look at our youth. Mm. And if our youth don't understand what they have, then they'll end up repeating certain habits, mindsets, behaviors just because they don't know. So it's up to us to say, listen, let's, let's get this information to them so they can, I, what I saw was brilliant. I saw the Science and Technology uh, University. Yes, and I see a lot of people same. coming to school here and just t using their minds and just thinking outside of the box. From what you're saying, I can see that, and I've seen a couple of videos, you know, okay. your YouTube videos and okay. all that. You're very passionate about, you know, finances and how people can be accountable um, with your finances and how to, you know, get to a certain level where you can manage your finances yes. well, and, and you know. But so you had that before you came to Africa, but when you had an experience here in Ghana, has it really deepened your, your, your purpose in, in oh driving people to that point? It's, it's on a different level. When mm. I go back, um, I'm coming back. Okay. I'm looking to do business here, but oh, not yes. exclusively for me to make a profit, mm. but for me to be able to connect the people of African descent in America with the Africans here yeah. and where they can somehow begin to exchange commerce or whatever ideas. But it, 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 for me, seeing it, seeing the potential, um, the words, I can't, even, I, I can't even think of the profound effect that it's had because I just sat in the mall last night, just sitting there. Now, remember, I, I don't even know there is a mall here. You understand? This yeah. is the ignorance. So I hop in an Uber. Mm. I said, I need to do, I do Uber in D.C. all of the time. I, I said, <laughs> I need to do the Accra Uber. Mm. So I'm just Ubering all over. I'm like, this is, this is amazing. So I'm just in the mall, like what I would do at home. I'm on the Wi-Fi with my computer. Yeah. And I'm watching the young folks just doing what young folks do in America. Mm. And I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. And, but, but I know that the young folks in America need to come here and see that because I know how they've been conditioned. Mm. And once they see the opportunity and they can work together, that's how we change the narrative, the, the narrative of what society has been saying about people of African, whether they're from Africa or of African descent. So it's, um, I, I look to be able to bring programs over here for financial literacy, because it's no different. Yeah. There, there is no difference. It's just understanding the systems and understanding the history of economics over the years and how that's played a part in everything. Well, people come down to Ghana and they say that we have, uh, they call it a miracle of the economy here yes. in Ghana, because you know I've lived in the States for quite some time and I realized that there are opportunities there for you to make money. It's easy to work in McDonald's and earn, let's say, seven dollars or whatever yes. dollars an hour. You can get that same opportunity here, but the person that earns like a thousand dollars a month, probably you might say that that person is way below, you know, um, probably below the the living standard living standard for a thousand dollars. If that person earns that same amount here in Ghana, that thousand dollars, let's say about five thousand CDs. If you earn five thousand CDs in Ghana. You be you take your children to school. You pay school fees. Actually, it's not oh, free. Oh wow! Okay. Like, oh, oh really? If you want, yeah, just if you want to go to public schools, but you, there's still something you need to pay. Okay. You you buy food. You pay utilities. All and within everything. that. And sometimes, if you put everything together, you realize that you actually need um, two thousand dollars to survive. But people still survive under five thousand. If you. You mean five, the one thousand? I think I think a thousand dollars is even too much. People really? earn the averagely, an average graduate Ghanaian probably earns two thousand cities or a thousand five hundred cities a month, which is not even up to a thousand dollars. So let's let's translate that for somebody. Let's say somebody in America, see, under, so they can understand the context. So, yeah. one thousand five hundred cities is how many American dollars? This is we're we'll bringing. Let's say three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars yes. a month. Okay, three hundred American dollars. Yes, and the person pays rent. You know, transportation to work back home goes to church, they actually give offerings. I was going to say, I was going to give, okay. Yes. 
and they have other relatives to take care of. I heard about that. They take care of their own family. They have to, and if you put everything together, you ask them how are they able to go through a month? With that? But they still survive. And they are able to use mobile phones. And some are even able to save to buy their own cars. And you wonder, how do they do this? No, 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 no. That is a miracle Here's a joke. Somewhere. Here's a joke. Here's a yeah. joke. I saw the direct TV dish mm. in the village. Oh, yes. They, they I, all in the villages. I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, hold on. I said, yeah. hold on. The house, you know, the straw in, in the tin roof. Yeah. And I looked and I said, D direct TV? Mm -hmm. Wow. So they know how to make it happen. And, and that's a miracle for us. And I think that that's, the, that's just the reason we are able to survive when we travel abroad. Because oh. then, then we do big things. They're able to send money, you know, they're um, able to do a lot of things down here because we've learned economics. You, you, learn, you just learn how to survive here in, in Africa. <laughs> and so I, as you've been here, I mean, you are, you are educating the youth and you're, it's the Christian community and how to be uh, financially accountable yes. and everything, but you will learn a different thing when you come here in Africa. It's about survival, and it's like I don't know. Probably it's a bigger hand that's taking care of us here. You you get to learn that. But I'm um, just just a few. I don't know how long you've been here in Ghana, but just a little comparison to how people spend and how people live their lives. How here. they spend he, and how they live compared to to the states. Well, what I saw here it was definitely more of a survival mm. mode for mm. most. Yeah, uh, you know, you, I know that you have your middle income, you have your upper upper income, but what I saw here was a twenty four seven. We call it in the states a grind or a hustle. Oh, we grind, yeah. And I wish we could just get like ten percent of the hustle and the grind here over there, because mm. I have never seen anything like the. It, it's almost like if you could take that same energy and start building infrastructure yeah. and start creating systems and, and educating people on, okay, now what do you do with that hustle? Mm. What do you do with that grind? Because it's easy to grind for your whole life and come to the end with nothing. So how do you start to now turn that into something where it starts to generate money for you? That's what I see here. Now that's the same conversation I had back home. Mm. Here's the challenge back home. The hustle is lacking. So it's kind of like video games and mom and dad. And you doing get everything. welfare stamps. You get the welfare. You get the, we don't have I'm that like, here. I'm, so there's no welfare here. Well, they, they, they well, I don't want to sound political, but it's okay. really there's no welfare. Let me just put it. Okay, that okay, way. Right, okay. You can't just go anywhere and get collect food stamps because you, 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 you you're just not working because. and you have children. Right. But he's gonna listen to you. Actually, you have those children. You have to. You we have need, to need some of the, we we need to take some of that <laughs> over there. I yeah. Mean, because it's you you sit back and you watch where somebody has the potential. Mm. But if you make it too easy for them, then they don't want to get up. Yeah. And I'm all about teaching people empowerment. And really, when you start looking at scripture, mm. God wanted his people to produce. When you started looking, it wasn't, he didn't want people just laying around and uh, go, go, to, go to the ant you sluggard mm. and consider his way. So it under, even in scripture, you saw what God was telling people, do not be lazy. And if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. So you start looking at those scriptures, and then when, now this was really fascinating for me. When I started looking in the Old Testament, and when God was speaking to Israel, and he was telling them the position he wanted them to be in. Yeah. I want you to be above, not beneath. I want you to be the head and not the tail. So he's giving them clear instruction, but then he's also telling them how to do it. And he did not want them to be uh, hostage to other nations. So as believers and followers of Christ, understanding that is so critical because then it relieves us of being dependent on so many other outside forces. So when we're dependent on the Lord and his wisdom, then he'll show us what to do hmm. with the resources. He'll show us how to multiply. He'll show us, he'll give us five talents, show us how to turn it into 10. Give us two, show it how to turn it into four and, and not bury it. So those are the things that when, especially when I start speaking from a biblical perspective, it's like now understanding you can take this money and you can invest it, but what you're investing in is not just yourself so you can have nice things, but you're able to invest in the community. And then when you start, when you're able to feed people and you're able to help, and then not only feeding them, but teaching them how to feed themselves, 
that's what leads to a level of spiritual as well as financial prosperity. Um, and, and that's, those are some of the things that I saw going on, even though people were hustling, it's like, if you could just teach them those principles as well and, and get that, that seed planted in them, now if there's a greater responsibility attached to what I'm earning. Yeah. It's not just about me making a million dollars. Okay, I can brag about it, put it on Instagram. Hey, I got a million dollars. But if I'm not willing to go back to the village and invest in the village, so the person who's out there making the kente cloth, or, you know, because I had a chance to see that, invest so maybe we have enough resources in the village where we can help pay for somebody to go to college so they now can come back because every other culture does it it's true and they come back and they say look let's do this let's make this happen so it's a mindset shift it's a heart shift um and it goes back to education on so many different levels I love this conversation I hope we have enough time to exhaust everything here do you have the Dominion TV app on your phone you should get it so that you don't miss out on any edition of Inspire. My name is Madonna. I'll see you again.